Welcome to this Excel Basics video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you most of the basics that you need to know in order to get started using Microsoft Excel. And the version of Excel that I'm going to be using in this tutorial is Excel 2016 for Windows. Having said that, if you're using a different version of Excel, maybe an older version or even a newer version, or if you use Excel on a Mac, there will be some slight differences, but for the most part, I would say 95% of what I show in this tutorial will be very applicable to you and your usage of Excel. So I simply clicked the icon here to get started using Excel, and Excel now would like me to make a choice. It wants to know if I would like to open up an Excel template or simply open a blank workbook. You can see that there are lots of templates to choose from. This is a Welcome to Excel tour, and it's a good way to kind of learn some of the basics of Excel, but that's why you're watching my video, so I'm gonna skip that one. There's a cash flow analysis, there's email insights, stock symbols, there's a sales invoice, there's a budget in here. Here it is, a family budget. There's all sorts of great Excel spreadsheets that you can just open up and start changing the data, start using it that way. So I would encourage you to browse and explore these templates that are available available to you. In addition to the 30 or so templates that you have here, there is an option to search online templates. So I'm going to do a search for budget and you can see it comes up with even more budgets. You're not limited just to the one family budget. There's a whole bunch that you can choose from. Over here on the right, there's categories that you can sift through and you can select the specific kind of budget or spreadsheet template that you would like to use. If you find one that you do want to use, you can just click on it and click create and it will make a copy of that as a spreadsheet that you can open and use in Excel. So please do spend some time exploring what's available and in many cases much of the work is already done for you. You can simply use somebody else's template and adjust it for what you need. Now templates are very useful but having said that I think in order to really learn how to use Excel fully and properly it's best to start with a blank workbook. So I'm just going to double click on that to select a blank workbook and open it up. And the first thing we need to do is learn about the layout that we have in Excel 2016. There are certain terms that you're going to need to know. First of all, across the top we have some tabs. Okay, We have the Home tab, the Insert tab, Page Layout, and more, as you can see. Each of these tabs is pretty important. And when you click on a particular tab, it opens up a ribbon. Okay, this is the ribbon for the Home tab. If I click the Page Layout tab, I get the Page Layout ribbon. Now each ribbon is divided up into groups. So you can see I have a Themes group, I have a Page Setup group, a Scale to Fit group, and these are all on the Page Layout ribbon. And I get to that ribbon by clicking on the Page Layout tab. So those are some important terms that you'll need to know. Tab, Ribbon, Group, and you'll notice in the corner of some of these groups, there's what I like to call a launch button. Okay, so the scale to fit group has a little launch button in the corner. The sheet options group has a launch button in the corner. The arrange group doesn't seem to have one. Now, what are these launch buttons? Basically, you can click on those launch buttons to give you even more options. So what Microsoft has done here is they've tried to fit all of the page layout options on this ribbon. But of course, there's a limited amount of geography. There's a limited amount of space that they have to work with. And so sometimes they can fit everything in that little group. Sometimes they can't. And if they can't, there's a launch button that you can click to get even more. So that's why some have a launch button, some don't. Okay, I think it's important to start with that terminology because I'm going to be using it throughout this tutorial. All right, a couple of other layout terms that you're going to need to know. In the spreadsheet itself, this is the spreadsheet, and spreadsheets are made up of columns and rows. Okay, so you can see we have an A column, a B column, C column, etc. And if I browse to the right, Okay, you can see that there's even more than that. And if needed, it'll just keep going to the right, adding more and more columns. Okay, once it gets to Z, it goes to AA, column AA. And so lots and lots of columns in this spreadsheet. Now what about rows? I have row number one, row number two, row number three. Okay, so spreadsheets are made up of columns 
and rows. Now the intersection of a column and a row is what produces a cell. So this is a cell. And every cell in Excel has a name. Okay, this particular cell is named C2. And you can imagine how I got that name. It's just the intersection of the column and the row. This particular cell here has a name. It's M9. And this is I16. Now, that may seem obvious and unimportant, but it's actually very exciting and powerful that every cell in Excel has a name. Because it has a name, you can describe it and you can have Excel do certain things with the content in each cell. We'll get to that a little bit later. All right, now in addition to columns, rows, and cells, there's another part of a spreadsheet that you need to know about, and that is a range, okay? Now a range is a group of cells that are together. A range could be this, it could be this, it could be this, it could be any number of things. It's basically a group of cells that are next to each other, that are together. And guess what? Ranges can also be named, just like cells can. So just like this is named L7, I can also name this. Okay, now the way you name a range is you start in the upper left and you name the cell in the upper left. So this is L7, and then you say the word through, so L7 through, and then you say the name of the cell in the lower right, N12. So L7 through N12, that is the name of this range. Now, in the back of your mind, just tuck this piece of information. The way you would write the name of this range is you would write L7 through, the symbol for through is a colon, and then you would put N12. So that is how you would write the name of the range that you see here. Okay, I'm gonna tap escape to get out of that because I don't really wanna type that in the cell. So that was some background information that you're gonna need in order to really use Excel properly. Now that we've talked about the layout of the ribbon and the tabs and the groups and things, and also the spreadsheet itself, with the columns, the rows, the cells, and the ranges, and actually I should add a couple more, you can see that this is all on a sheet, sheet one. And I can add a sheet two, sheet three, etc. Each of these sheets added together is what creates a workbook. So sheets or worksheets add up to a workbook. Okay, so now that we've got all of that as a foundation for our Excel use, let's now start actually creating and working on an Excel spreadsheet. Now to make this a little bit more interesting for you to look at, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna use this slider in the lower right corner and I'll just click and drag to zoom in on my spreadsheet. Okay, so that should be a little bit easier for you to see. And now I'm gonna click on A1 and enter some data in this A1 cell. And just as an example, let's say I wanna use Excel to create an inventory of my movie collection. Okay, now this could be anything. If you're a teacher, maybe this is the supplies that you have that you loan out to the students. Or if you're a secretary at a school, let's say you're in charge of keeping track of the supplies at the school, whatever it might be. But let's say I wanna do an inventory of the movies that I own. First thing I wanna do is maybe put a little title in there. So I'm gonna type in A1 and I'll type movie inventory. And you'll notice that my text is bigger than the cell itself. It goes too far to the right. But you know what, don't worry about that. Just hit enter or return on the keyboard and I've successfully entered my first data into this spreadsheet. Now, it looks like these words, movie inventory, are spilling over from A1 into B1. But in actuality, that's not true. It's an illusion. Both of these words are stored in A1. If I click on B1, I could type in B1 and hit return or enter. And you'll notice that movie inventory is still stored in A1. Okay, so they don't interact, they don't interfere with each other. So no need to worry if your text is too wide to fit in A1. But having said that, sometimes making your spreadsheet look nice actually helps you use it better. So let's talk about how I could maybe fix this. It's not really a problem, but how could I fix it if I wanna make it look a little nicer? Well, what I can do, I can stretch out any column or even any row if I want to, 
by just putting my mouse between any two column letters. So this is column A, column B. Put my mouse between the two, right on the line or very close to it, and you'll notice that my mouse cursor changed into a double-sided arrow. That's a good sign. So now I can click and drag to stretch that out to make it wider. Now you may have noticed when I entered movie inventory into that cell and I hit enter or return, it automatically moved me down. In Excel, when you tap enter or return, you move down the spreadsheet. If you wanna move up the spreadsheet, you can hold shift and hit enter or return and it will move up. Okay, so shift enter or shift return moves up, enter or return moves down. Now what if you want to move to the right? Maybe I want to type something in B1. What I would do is I would tap tab. Tab moves you to the right. So I could enter more text there and then tap tab and enter more text there and just keep tabbing over. What if you want to move left? I bet you can guess what it is. You would hold shift and tap tab. So shift is basically used to do the opposite of whatever it would be otherwise. So enter, return is normally down, but shift, enter, return is up, tab is to the right, shift, tab is to the left. Another way you can navigate throughout the spreadsheet is by using the arrows on your keyboard. If you find the up, down, left, right arrows, you can just use those to move up, down, left, or right. It's a little bit more awkward than using enter or shift enter, but that's another option. And of course, you can also use your mouse to click on where you want to go. But I'll tell you, if you can learn to use Excel simply with the keyboard without using your mouse very much, it's really gonna go a lot better for you. So I've got my title in there. Now I'm gonna click on A2 and I'm going to type in the word title. That's where I'll put the movie title. Now I'll tap tab to move over to the right and I'll put in date purchased, tab again, rating, tab again, value, tab again, genre, and tab again, location. And that will store quite a bit of information for me about my movie inventory. All right, with that last one, when I hit enter, it moved me down and it moved to the left, expecting me to put in the first record is what they call it. And the first record would be the first movie. So let's say I put in Star Wars. Again, I could tap tab to move over to the right. I could say, okay, I purchased it 2007. It's rated PG. It's worth maybe $5 and it's science fiction and it's located in the living room. Okay, so that's an example of data entry, how you can enter data into a spreadsheet by clicking on a cell or somehow getting on a cell, typing, and then hitting either tab to move to the right or enter to move down. Now, as another example, I'm gonna type in another record and I'll put in some other information here. And at this point, let's say I notice a misspelled word and I would like to fix that. Okay, you'll notice that I misspelled empire. If I click on cell A4 to try to fix that misspelling, watch what will happen. As soon as I type, it erases what was there. Okay, the reason why is because when I clicked on that cell, when you click on a cell, anything that you type replaces what is there already. It deletes what's there and then replaces it with whatever you type. So there's a distinction I need to tell you about. There's a difference between being on a cell and being in a cell. To get in a cell, you have to double click on it, okay? Notice what happened when I double clicked on that cell it actually jumped me inside the cell and now I have a cursor that's flashing. And I can click or I can use the arrow keys to move that cursor where I want it to be. So there is a big difference between being on a cell and being in a cell. In this case, I don't wanna be on the cell. I don't wanna replace all of the text in this cell. I wanna click twice quickly. Now I've jumped inside it and I have this cursor and I can move it where I want it to be, fix the misspelling, hit return. Again, that may seem like a very small, insignificant thing, but Excel is all about details. And all of these little details will really enhance your use of Excel. So please stick with me and pay attention to these details. And I promise your use of Excel will be much more satisfying and effective. Now give me a few minutes to put in a few more records and then I'll resume the tutorial. Okay, so I've finished putting in some movies here and some records is what they're called. Each of these rows contains a record. 
And to help you see this a little bit better, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. So you can see I've put in quite a few movies here. Now, what we need to do next is dress this up a little bit, make it look a little better. It just doesn't look quite right to our eye at this point. So what are some things that we can do to make this look nicer? First of all, here at the top, my title basically of this spreadsheet, it's kind of off to the side and it doesn't have anything that makes it stand out and look different. So I'm gonna click on it on the cell and I'm gonna click up here at the top on the home tab and the home ribbon. I can click on bold to give it a bold look. So that will help it stand out. Notice that I can also use the paint bucket tool to paint the background of that cell. I may or may not want to do that. In this case, I don't necessarily want that. So I'm gonna click the arrow next to it and I'm gonna to go to no fill. I could also change the color of the text itself. Okay, so that is also an option. I'm gonna go back to black in this case. In addition, I could italicize or underline. Those are all good options to have but that will help the text stand out a little bit. Another thing I can do is click on cell A1 and drag. I'm still holding the mouse click and I'm gonna drag until I've covered all of the content of my spreadsheet. So the content of this spreadsheet ends at column F. I don't have anything beyond that. So I just clicked and dragged to get all the way across. Now watch what I can do. On the home tab, home ribbon, there's a button here in the alignment group called merge and center. And if I click on that, see what it did? It merged all of those cells together. So this is now one big cell and it centered it. Okay, so merge and center is very helpful to do what I just did to basically break down the walls between these cells and make it one big cell and then to center it. That looks a lot better. The other thing, like I said before, the text not quite fitting in the cell kind of bothers me. So I could go up here to the top, like I showed earlier, and click and drag to make sure everything fits. But I want you to see a shortcut. There's a shortcut to doing this. All you have to do is go up here at the top and just go between any two of the column letters and double click. And if you do that, look what happens. It automatically will perfectly size the column so that all of the text will fit. I could do that also for date purchased and for rating. Now, notice in that case, the rating column actually got narrower. It's because it doesn't need to be longer than what it is now, okay? So I can do that with value and so forth. Now, let me show you yet another trick that's a little bit of a time saver. Instead of double clicking between every single column one at a time, look what I can do. Click and drag on the column letters all the way across to the end of my data, and then double click between any two of these. It doesn't matter which, double click, and notice now it automatically resized every column. Every column that I had selected was affected by that double click, and now is perfectly sized to fit the content that's in those cells. And if I browse back to the left using this slider, you can see everything is perfectly sized. So I used a phrase there. I said everything that was selected, every column that was selected was affected by what I did. In Excel, that's a nice phrase to maybe think about. Select to affect. If you want to affect it, you must select it first. One more little shortcut, little trick. When you click and drag on those column headings, yes, the fastest way to resize is to then double click between any two column letters, but you could alternatively just click and drag and watch what happens. I'm gonna resize this column, let go, and look, every single column was affected. Because I had selected each, they're all affected by that, and they're all exactly the same width. So hopefully those little tricks will help you to be able to resize your columns the way that makes the most sense for you. And the idea is to make your data look nice because when it looks good, it's often easier to read, easier to understand and comprehend. Okay, now there are good reasons sometimes to keep columns narrow, even if all the text doesn't fit. So you don't have to always make sure everything is always visible, but I want you to be able to do that when you need to. Okay, next up, I guess I do want to click here on movie inventory and underline it to set that apart as the title. And then down here, I would like to make all of these column names different. So I'll highlight them and I'll go up and make them bold and let's say italicized. Now, the way I did that so fast, 
you may not have noticed, I simply clicked on the row number and it highlighted the entire row all the way to the right. And so that selected it. And then to affect it, I just chose bold and italicize and it affected everything that's selected. So at this point, I hope that you are familiar now with the different names of the layout in Excel. We know what to call the different things like the tabs, the groups, the ribbons, things like that. We also know about columns, rows, cells, and ranges, sheets, and workbooks. And we know how to enter data and then how to select it, to affect it, and to change how it looks on the screen. And we also know how to adjust the column widths and I didn't show this explicitly, so let me just quickly do that. Notice that you can affect the rows as well. So I can make rows taller than they would have otherwise been. I can double click between them to perfectly resize. I can affect more than one at a time by selecting more than one row. So all of those same techniques that I showed about the columns can also be used with the rows. So all of this, in my opinion, gives you a good foundation. It helps you understand the basics of using Excel. In a future video, I'll show you some intermediate Excel tips and tricks, ways that you can save time and effort as you're building your spreadsheets. We'll also get into formulas and functions, and that's really where much of the power of Excel is found. And I'll also throw in a couple of advanced Excel tips and tricks. So please watch for that future video. Thanks for watching this Excel Basics video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students, and watch for a new video at least every Monday. Also, I hope that you'll follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and other social media. So I hope that you'll follow me on these social media platforms and that we can keep learning together.